Okay, now on to installing the uh, uh, Pro Brick clip on. Um, I want to uh, point out something here, and so be very careful with it. Uh, it comes in this shape, as you can see here. Uh, this is where the points you want to tighten the, uh, um, the I guess the um, clamp onto the suspension strut. So you want to have access to this bolt in order to uh, tighten them and adjust to your liking. Uh, it doesn't have the left or right size, but when you flip them, it gives you a different way to uh, access that. So this being on the right size, I want this to be outward so that I have access to uh, tightening it or, or loosening it. So I'm going just to install it that way, okay? I might have to loosen a little bit here, but that's something I want to point out as well. And once you install that, uh, again, this is where the adjustability of this pro brake clip on becomes so evident in why I chose this, because I want flexibility to be able to adjust whether I'm on track, lower it on the street, rise it so that I can have a more comfortable seating position. So I discover another uh, um, thing to consider. So you can see here that uh, I've uh, sort of uh, putting back the uh, top triple plate. Now, I do want to bring this up to this level, okay? To like uh, the first line here, so that the uh, clamp can be raised up a little bit higher. Now, obviously every inch is, is, is uh, is valuable, but in doing so, uh, what it will mean is that there will be a gap in there. You see, there's going to be a gap if I raise this plate up to this level. So, <clears throat> if you are considering of doing that, what I highly recommend is to perhaps order this clamp or this screw here, a bushing screw from AF1 Racing and to add on top of that so that you don't have a gap when you raise up this triple plate clamp uh, because otherwise it's going to be an eyesore uh, riding and seeing that thing or uh, washing the bike and you see that open gap um, you're going to ask yourself and, and say what the hell but it's also um, allow water to go into it so uh, no good now here's the thing you need to uh, be very careful. You see that uh, opening of that bushing on the stanchion? Uh, you want to align that with the opening of the clamp. Okay, not a trick. So everything is uh, put back. The uh, top triple plate is back in its uh, place. Um, the 14 mil bolt, it's uh, tightened down as well as both uh, the uh, bolts to clamp onto the struts are tightened down. The semi-automatic suspension uh, electronics are attached and uh, tightened. Um, so you can see here, both of the clamps are on the uh, struts right now. Uh, the position of it, I still haven't really played, okay? And using the five mil Allen key, I am just going to tighten it just a little where the original max position is uh, so that it's uh, held in place. I'm going to just uh, tighten the middle uh, bolt and, and keep it there. Uh, I'm going to leave it at zero, uh, let's say 20 degrees right now uh, just to be consistent. And then next, I'm going to install the uh, handlebar. Obviously, there's a little kink in there that you know gives the sweep angle. Um, I'm going to put it at zero and just a tad over. You can see there isn't much, isn't much um, um, length for it to protrude through. And you don't want that because you don't want to interfere with the electronics for the suspension here. 
Uh, so just want this attack there. I want to leave it using the middle marker. I want to put at uh, zero and tighten the uh, screw to keep it in place. As you can see, it, it, it's still loose, which is fine. So the whole point. Now be careful with the uh, <laughs> the bolts here. Pretty much a reminder for myself, really, not to strip it. So the trick I'm gonna use is the roughly, you just wanna have an idea whether you have the right position or not. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn all the way to the left side. Okay, just to see how much clearance I have. Uh, take into consideration of the uh, control groupings going to be installed, I would say about an inch and, inch and a half away from the tank and making sure that nothing here is protruding. So I can see absolutely nothing protruding, even if the uh, uh, brake lever is about here. So I think I, I have enough clearance, but you know, about an inch and an inch and a half away from the tank. I think it's kind of good right now. The same thing for the other side. I'm going to turn all the way to the right. Okay, so yeah, I have a little bit of uh, room. I can play a little bit, push back there. Uh, that obviously changed down here as I put it to measure. Again, that's because I did not, um, I guess, decided on the actual angle of the clamp onto the struts there yet. So, okay, so right here you can see. Lots of room, even if the uh, clutch install should have enough room. But I confirm that once I install uh, everything back. Um, so you recall this template that uh, I made reference earlier. So what I'm going to do is going to cut it out, and uh, I am going to, um, you know, put it uh, wrap around, and starting from I guess this end and in here. But before I do that, though. I will put all the controllers in here to see how much room I have. I'm going to be fixing this a little bit with sitting on the seat and adjusting with everything before I tighten everything down. But I think this step here is going to be uh, uh, a little bit of a try and error uh, until you get that comfortable um, position that you want. What I do want to take into consideration is that because I do track and I intend to take this bike out on a track sometime. To make things easy uh, is that I would only need to drop the riser if and when I go out on tracks. Um, that means I don't want to play with the, uh, you know, the um, clamp here onto the struts, maneuvering all of that. And then you have to reposition your control to ensure it clears, etc. Uh, that's the idea setup. Minimal movement as much as possible. So the only thing that would be moving is really uh, the riser up and down for streets and for racing position. Then again, you know you have the sweep position to play with. So the, it it it's fabulous with uh, uh, adjustment, and this is one of the reasons why I I love the uh, pull brake uh, clip ons. Now is a good time to uh, switch out the uh, clutch perch. You recall that uh, I purchased the uh, perch to uh, replace the um, one that is left behind uh, by the OEM and it has this uh, bump. So I bought one from the RSV4 that does not have the bump for the mirror. Uh, so this is a good time to do that swap right now. Um, so to open the uh, the clutch is very uh, straightforward. There's a screw right here. You just undo it and uh, gently remove the clutch uh, bar, the, the clutch handle. Uh, just making sure that you don't drop it on the floor and scratch that. Now, uh, the RSV4 clutch perch does not come with a... Um, um, sensor the, the click here so to remove this click here I'm going to quickly show you how to do it um, so first you have to unscrew this uh, um, I think it's the 10 mil uh, screw 
So just undo it. Just like so. And then uh, remove the washer with it. And then all you gotta do is uh, uh, push it backward, okay? I remove the washer and the screw, making sure that I don't drop it. There, so I just remove it out and just push it out through and that's where you are able to remove that uh, sensor there, the clutch sensor. Now the housing, what left behind with the housing is that there's a, a screw. You see that screw, flathead screw? You need to remove that in order to remove the housing to install onto the new uh, clutch purge. So that should be very straightforward and um, you should be able to do that. So I just put the uh, control grouping together and uh, discover a few things. Interference is um, the obvious. As you can see here, the purge and the uh, clutch there, it's kind of in the way. You could not go beyond that. And below that, you see, it cannot be any more adjusted. So what to do? Well, good thing this is uh, uh, fully adjustable. I will get to that point quickly after on this side here that I'm showing you. So right here, again, the same thing that I uh, mentioned that the uh, name should be front forward and the um, boat should be available for you to access. Now, here's a problem. You got the uh, brake uh, master cylinder reservoir here in the way and you could not uh, have access to that once everything is mounted down. Uh, more importantly, uh, you could see right here, the uh, clamp that is onto the uh, strut is in the way of this brake uh, master cylinder. So what we need to do is to push it forward a little or backward a little. So you have to adjust to allow that clearance. I do not want to remove the whole triple clamp all over again, uh, just so that to reposition this um, clamp. I'm not gonna do that. Okay. So there's a way to do it easily. I had to move the clamp, rotate it counterclockwise. So bring it inside and allow that uh, clearance or uh, clockwise to uh, clear that. But the important here is that the uh, cable has to be clear. Okay, so that's, that's something to note. Now over to this side here. So thankfully this is all adjustable and this problem could be resolved by remove this, I'm holding it there, and rotate it around. Voila. Now, instead of the uh, label is facing forward, it's now facing backward. And here, I would think you have better access to the boat than otherwise front forward facing. Aha, uh -huh. so, and you can see here with that mounting, you have much more clearance of the um, brake perch here and be able to uh, move up or down depending on your preference of the angle. So that's one solution. Now I will have to do the same thing on the other side to rotate it around and to see what's the clearing with this there. So right here, the brake line there, it's interfering with the uh, clamp. Now I want it to be down in the down most forward position possible, but I cannot go any further down uh, because of that interference with the clamp right there. You see with the metal piece there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to loosen that ban banjo um, screw there uh, just a tight a bit and then uh, bring the brake line out this way 
So uh, it, it will and should give me a little bit of clearance. So you can see the cables, they are very crowded. Uh, and you want to uh, make sure that they are clear when all is said and done. Uh, it's going to be some oil uh, leaking as soon as you loosen that banjo bolt. But uh, it should give you enough to uh, rotate the uh, brake line uh, so that you get uh, proper clearance. It's a 12 milli. Look at that, not even a drip of oil. So that's excellent. But uh, I'm able to clear that back a little. So that should give me, I'm tightening it back up again. Okay, so that's, uh, that is done. So I wrote out a series of steps where I think the sequence of adjusting the handlebar and I'm going to read it out to you. Okay, first I'm going to set it up in race position because I think that's the most, um, uh, how would I say that, clearance intensive position. So I'm going to uh, set it up in the race position, uh, the lowest on the riser bar. Um, and it has to clear the most forward and the most backward turn um, and then adjust as you see fit. Uh, I already just adjust the uh, bunch of bolt, rotate counterclockwise to get enough clearance for the back, for the brake position at the, steep, the steepest uh, position. Because like I say, my hand position, I prefer it to be flat when you do your brakes. Some ergonomics there. So now I just see it there, so I got a clearance on that. Uh, adjusting that also allows you not to adjust the clamp onto the strut. So that's also uh, a good reason to adjust the bunch of bolts on the brake line. And then um, adjust the clamp if necessary. Make sure you do the clearing test uh, forward, then backward most. Adjust if necessary. Uh, then I go on to the left hand side, start with the clamp to match the right hand side, obviously. Um, and then put the clutch in the position that you are most comfortable with. Again, pitching forward in a straight line so that you know you don't have to go like that or like that. Uh, put added uh, stress on your wrist. Um, and then I would uh, uh, do the clearing test just like the right side, most forward and most backward, making sure the brake line do not hit anything, the screen, the tank, etc. Uh, and then um, once that's achieved, I would rise the, uh, the riser and do it in the uh, street riding position. Now, all of this needs to be done before you start drilling where the um, um, control grouping screw needs to be uh, with the template that I, I showed yesterday. Um, so that's all my steps and I'm gonna go ahead and do it. So I'm, um undecided a little bit and uh, struggle with uh, the orientation, the reference points for the clamp, how to set it up correctly and whatnot. So um, according to a pro break, the uh, clamp is six degrees angle. Now that is the angle from the center hole of the clamp to the center hole of the riser, six degrees offset but when you're installing this clamp here um, you have play or room to play with in terms of moving this forward this clamp forward in doing so what it will do to you is that you will have more sweep angle to play with but the interference of the cable and whatnot would be a problem because that going to hit the um, front of the panel so you want it 
just enough to give you uh, maximum sweep if you are the person who likes that and especially important in a race setting or uh, but at the same time enough clearance for the uh, cable not hitting the uh, front panel when it is most forward uh, position forward turn so what I am doing and looking at is there is the hint of that um, crack there you can see the crack through that is the center line referencing from the center line of that hole from the um, clam the riser of the original to that thing there so you can see that line is parallel uh, currently right now uh, it is if you want to move up a little bit to about six degree that would be enough to allow you maximum uh, sweep angle and enough for clearance so that's what i'm going to proceed with because um i had a struggle of referencing where to uh, rotate the clam sometimes i hate being an engineer i can be over analyzed at times but here's what i i meant so that opening there could become your horizontal line okay you can see and establish that and so your zero line right here on my thumb would be at an angle, I don't know, I would assume almost 45 degrees. So you don't want it to be too horizontal. Um, so what I think is uh, important in this installation is to establish the zero line at an angle that uh, allows you uh, to adjust forward or backwards. Um, so if you're looking at this, if I put my zero line as a horizontal line, then that point of reference there would be at around, I would say, uh, 15 degrees or so uh, positive. So that is not a thing to consider. A few benefits of having the ability to rotate the clam further up or further down. Uh, one of which is the distance from your shoulder to uh, where this um, riser will be installed. I'm relatively short, five, six-ish, seven almost. So I wanted to be able to uh, comfortably reach the thing at a comfortable riding position for a long duration rides. So if I go all the way down, this means I am able to reach that easier and my body position is a bit more upright. But I lose the sweeping angle ability. Uh, but at the same time, I have a lot of clearance here for the cable um, to um, not interfere when the bike is in most forward position for the handlebar. So that's another thing. So I think I'm going to decide on the horizontal of this reference line here, which make my zero line at about negative 30 to 35 degrees downwards. So I think I'm going to settle for that. For a reason that I have good clearance, as well be able to give me a good reach as I'm relatively short. So what I'm doing is trying to establish that zero line, zero horizontal line there with my hand position where I think it's comfortable. So right now everything is at zero. You see here that is at zero, zero angle sweep. And there is uh, at zero as well. Um, now i want to see where the comfortable of the hand position is because i'm trying to establish that zero line right a note about using the templates for drilling the um, pin holes for the control grouping so the recommended uh, instruction says that you should put it 12 degrees relative to the uh, uh, bar 12 degrees means 
rotating this a little bit in relative to that zero line there. So that would make about 40 degrees uh, forward or so. Now, I want to caution that though. If and when you do want to increase your sweep angle um, to get a better um, straight bar up, that means the control unit would move along with that. So it would be a little bit more on this side, okay? Because the sweep angle, what it means is that you rotate down to negative um, 40 degrees, for example. Um, that means the control bar is gonna be like this. So what I recommend to do is to line it up to that zero line and make your drill for your pinhole that way. So when you rotate the uh, uh, the bar for the sweep angle, you are able to uh, rotate everything intact. So I just went ahead and um, cut out the template and tape it to the zero degree line sweep. Not necessarily the 12 o'clock as uh, recommended. Um, so I just uh, tape it here. I'm going to do the same thing, measuring from the outside and right on to as much as possible the zero line. Tape to one side first and then roll it over to the other side. And then we're just gonna cut it. And that should, that should do it. 12 degrees, yeah, that's close enough. And I got this jig here, the LSI jig. So, I mean, like some people could do the, uh, the punch to uh, add the hole, but because I got this jig, I'm just gonna put it in there to the location and I'm gonna do it. So now, before we drill the hole, we are gonna just remove it and just to try to position it a little bit and see where exactly they are um, on the marker. So I gotta lose this side of the handlebar. There's gonna be a lot of, uh, you know, installing and removing the bar. So be very careful not to strip the hex key. And if you do, well, that's going to be problematic. So I'm going to slide it in here. Actually, I can't even slide it in because it's, it's too thick now. So I'm going to trust the guy and the guide here, and just going to go ahead and uh, use my jig and drill the hole. Just put it back to where it was here before. Make sure it's equal length, equal size on both ends, and then just slightly tighten it at zero degrees. Yeah, because with the uh, layer of the paper, it becomes too thick to slide in the uh, uh, control groupings. So, put jig oh, and then on the other side. Now remember what I say earlier that uh, the thread size for the uh, Traction control is the same as the thread size for the throttle control over the other side. There you go, that's good enough. Don't tighten it too much, you know. Just really, you want it just to hold it in place and be able to drill um, it there. So, I obviously need to uh, rotate the uh, uh, handlebar in order to get enough clearance to get my drill through.